and welcome back to Interpreting the Scares! That's right, we're back at it on our month-long journey through the nightmares with yet another film to check off of that bucket list and another that I've never really seen or heard about before today, and it's Roman Polanski's Repulsion. <laughs> Repulsion is a 1965 black and white British psychological horror film written and directed by Roman Polanski, and it stars Katrina Deneuve as a woman currently acting pretty darn strange. She's drifting off, she's having nightmares, she's experiencing hallucinations and past trauma, which is slowly but surely pulling her into a dark, dark place where she's not fully understanding or comprehending the ramifications or seriousness of her own actions. This is definitely a film that you can watch and immediately say, yeah, they really just don't make movies like this anymore, but is that a good thing or a bad thing? Truthfully, for Repulsion, I think that it's a mix of both. I'll start with the aspects of the movie that feel genuinely strong, like a lost art, and that's its approach to horror itself. Most of the films that I'll be talking about this month cover something paranormal, you know, like a ghost, like a creature feature, or haunted house, etc. And that's fine, some of those things really are indeed spooky. But the problem with modern horror is that it often forgets what makes those things scary in the first place, which is the mind. Phobias, actual fears that people have. Which is partially why I like the movie Arachnophobia. People naturally have a real fear of spiders, it's obvious. So they made a movie that exploited that fear. It still works for today's audience because, like the others, you're talking about a creature feature. It's just, it's not a paranormal one. Repulsion also focuses on a real fear that people can have. Though it's much harder to pinpoint that fear this time around. You have a leading woman who has an irrational fear or repulsion of a few different things, but one of the main ones is men and their natural growing fondness of her, and she's just, she's not having it. Part of this is honestly very relatable for women when it comes down to men objectifying them as a whole. And the more that you think about that, the more you might be able to understand this film as a metaphor of the things that women actually have to deal with on a daily occasion. I honestly believe that you'll get more out of this film on repeat viewings. It's the type of movie that film students can watch, analyze, probably write papers on. But it's really not for the average moviegoer in 2022, which is the audience that I review for. The reason why I say that is because it's a film that literally has no exposition. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Exposition's not a bad thing. Too much of exposition can be terrible, absolutely. But I believe the same can be said for movies that have little or absolutely no exposition as well. You need it. You gotta be just right, Goldilocks. And Polanski just seems to be the kind of director that likes to toy with the confusion that audience members have, and he just kind of dials that up a notch. I remember watching Rosemary's Baby thinking somewhat similar, and I wasn't a huge fan of that movie either. Repulsion mostly intrigues and surprises me with its ideas and concepts, and I was honestly pretty darn impressed with the execution. But overall, because there's no real exposition explaining a few things, I was bored until maybe the third act, and you really don't know what it is that makes this girl as frightened as she is until you're given a hint at the very end of the movie. And again, it's not a verbal hint, it's visual. It doesn't lay everything out for you, you still have to come to the conclusion for yourself, but the last shot of the movie kind of puts the rest of the jigsaw puzzle, which is the film, together if you're paying attention. I've seen people say that this movie is a masterpiece, and I will not fault you for that if you believe that. I understand where you're coming from. It strays away from the typical approaches fear, like movies really should still do today. And it's even relatable for certain women. But I think the execution, primarily in the first and second act, isn't clear enough for modern audiences to follow. And I can 100% see people turning it off because one, they don't get it, and two, they're getting bored pretty quickly. Yes, there's an overwhelming atmosphere of confusion and strange behavior coming from this woman, but it's not enough to light the embers of your enthusiasm, in my opinion. As a film lover, I do appreciate what was being done here, but as a general audience member of 2022, certain things don't translate as well. If it were being remade today, I guarantee it would be very different than what you see here, which again, is a mix of both good and bad. Would I watch it again? No, at least not for entertainment purposes, but I could see 
turning it on again as a project to study or write papers on. But because I wouldn't rewatch it again just to watch it, I don't find much entertainment value in it, which also means I won't be buying it. I won't be putting it on a birthday or Christmas wish list. I won't be recommending it to others or whatever. If you're a film student, go crazy. There's stuff to learn in this movie to be sure. But as a general audience member that watches movies, it might not work for you. Let's go ahead and throw up my final score for a second, which is C minus letter grade. A final score of 56%, most of which I appreciated with this film, you can see in my unbiased score, which is a fair 64%. But as you can also see from my bias score, or just how I felt about the movie, I wasn't fully there for this one, unfortunately. That score is 48%, but yeah, final score of 56% just means to me it, it's not entirely pointless. It's a mix of things I really admire, I find wonderful as well, but also it's just a movie that doesn't lure me in story or entertainment wise. But take that as you will and let me know what you thought about Repulsion if you saw it. And what is your favorite Roman Polanski film? As for YouTube, you guys know, do hit the like, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell to be notified when I come out with my next review. And whenever that is, peace out!